Tamriel Rebuilt is an ancient and legendary modding project for The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Originally conceived in 2001, that is, before the game was even released, the project is still in active development today. Expanding the world of the game in a manner consistent with style and vision of the original designers is the stated goal of Tamriel Rebuilt. Every year or so, the developers release one expansion-sized content update that has a new playable chunk of the mainland with quests, factions and all, and they have been doing this for a while. We have 20 years of content to cover. In this video, we'll explore the 2018 expansion Old Ebonheart, as well as 2019 release Anthrin, and we'll also do a little bit of Sacred East. Come on then, say something or move on. Old Ebonhard is the central hub for all things Empire in the Dark Elf province of Morrowind. It's a classic RPG big city, like New Reno, Tarrant or New Vegas, with classic RPG big city gameplay. I've never thought about this, but being here on the streets of Old Ebonhard made me realize that Morrowind never had this kind of gameplay before. Sure, there is Vivek, but due to technical limitations, it felt more like several interconnected smaller towns rather than one large community. Unity. The poor live in the slums next to the harbor. This is the Craftsman Street with dozens of shops and services. Follow the street and you'll reach the plaza, where the guilds are, as well as company offices, rich people manors and a chapel. The harbor is busy. Tam Princess Morgia is the Imperial Navy flagship in Morrowind. On Kilia is the captain. The tower to our left is the Imperial Navy command post. Potemus Marolos, a dark elf with a cyrodelic name, is the admiral. He won't speak to us without an appointment. The marine uniform is… well, I suppose it's like legionnaire uniform, but with more scales. Do we have anything to declare? Nope. Here to see the castle? Yes, actually. The Eben Tower is a city within a city. It contains courts, government officials, ambassadors from other provinces, representatives of Dunmer Great Houses, the Imperial Legion Command HQ. Two nobles from Kolovia are enjoying the Count's hospitality. Karos Kokeus is the Castilian of the Eben Tower. He is a Count, or as he himself prefers it, a Burgrave of Old Ebonheart. It's an old German word for a hereditary ruler of a town or a castle. The library has an impressive collection of rare books, including a rare copy of Vampires of Vardenfell Volume 2. The tower's kitchens and living quarters. Kind of cramped, but they are making the best of it. The Imperial Legion Smithy, equipment storage and a training facility. And this is the Imperial Curia, the government. The mosaic on the wall shows the Tribune and living god Vivek bowing before the victorious Talos. Is it really a good idea to antagonize the elves like this? The event portrayed, the signing of the Treaty of the Armistice, happened late in the Second Era, almost a thousand years ago. At the time, the Empire won several battles, but the Dark Elf defeats weren't yet catastrophic. So the treaty was signed on somewhat good terms for the Dunmer. Morrowind was incorporated into the Empire as a province, but the elves would enjoy quite a bit of autonomy. The Moth and Tiger is the place we'll spend our first night in Old Ebonheart. We should do our best to fit in. Dark Elves hate Outlanders. The city is an enclave of Imperial cosmopolitan culture in the middle of a hostile province. Something to keep in mind. This man, a Dunmer with a Nashlander name, sells traditional Morrowind armors. Bone mold, Natch leather, kitten. Oh yes, an orc helm, natch pieces, Kolovian style gauntlets and a reachman's skirt. A combination of light, medium and heavy armors, a mix of styles and cultures that somehow, despite everything, manages to look completely coherent. Hostel of Standar's Mercy. Operated by the Imperial Cult, it provides housing and food for the poorest of the poor. In Morrowind, this often means the beast races. A high-class clothing store owned by orcs. The entrepreneurial side of the Imperial melting pot. Some locals would insult orcs by calling them the Poo Elves. But I want to ask you something. Have you ever seen a toilet in a Dunmer household? Ela Free Bears Exotic Weapons. The name checks out. The green glass is a rare, light and durable material, second only to ebony. A house and workshop of a stonemason. The homes and forts don't build themselves. 
The local woodworker is a Bosmer. This is a little odd. See, the wood elves have this thing called the Green Pact, which is an oath that they can't kill, injure, or eat vegetation. And the woodworker actually comments on that, says some Bosmer choose to interpret the Green Pact to mean only vegetation growing in Valenwood. Well, hypocrisy is the lubricant that keeps the wheels of society turning. Jinjira, the weaver, operates a loom in her house. And this is the whole of the local fighters' guild. As you can see, it's a little more spacious than what we're used to. Morrowind is a perfect place for fighters' guild mercs to earn their pay. Cyrodiil is a little too civilized. The Imperials prefer to deal with lawyers, not adventurers. Skyrim, the Reach, Hammerfell are in a permanent state of political turmoil. There is little trust, and the moneybags there prefer to deal with local organizations. Morrowind, on the other hand, is just unstable enough for us to have plenty of work, but not enough for the Dumbners to kick us out. Our first job is to get a Restore Willpower potion for a local guild officer who got cursed by a witch and uh, now exhibits antisocial behavior. Take your drunken war stories elsewhere, braggart. I don't know, he seems normal to me. After getting the potion from an alchemist next door, we force the guildmate to drink it. Before the curse overtakes him again, he directs us to a cave east of the city, where the witch is supposedly hiding. Look at this, it's a Guar stable? While searching for the cave, we come upon a temple-run infirmary. This warrior woman is incoherent. The tribunal temple priest explains that she is the ordinator of war, who went mad after a battle with heretics. More curses. And what is this creature? A Velk? It doesn't appear to be hostile. Or to have visible external genitals. Domesticated animals, they are like Dunmer cows or sheep. We stumble upon a little camp of Velk herders. This is the cave. The witch doesn't appear to be hostile. The woman is actually an alchemist. Says the fighter's guild person came here, knocked over her ingredients, behaved like a complete moron, so she decided to prank him a little. We are provided with an uncursing potion, which we force feed to the man back at the guild hall. A daedra emerges from his throat. Is this healthcare? Our guildmate is fine now. A job well done. The basement of the guild hall is just as expansive as the top floors. There is a Khajiit instructor, a smith with a little guild store, and these two. Training sessions. Our kind of place. I hope it's okay with everyone if I put my stuff here. This room will be our new home for the next two months or so. There are beds upstairs and we'll be buying food in the inn next door. The region we're exploring is called Antherin. It was the focus of 2019 release of Tamriel Rebuild. The expansion fleshes out the places and communities around the Thur River and Lake Andoram. Antherin and Old Ebonheart are so heavily interconnected, it doesn't really make any sense to talk about them separately. What is this place? Some sort of a trading port? We end all talk now. It's a slave market operated by Great House Hlalu. They have a ferry service here, but it's only available to Hlalu hirelings. Slavery is illegal everywhere in the Empire, except for the province of Morrowind. It's a part of Dark Elf culture, you see, so the exception had to be made. Hypocrisy, lubricant, etc. This tiny fishing village on the eastern bank of the river belongs to House Indoril. This is how Indoril guards look like. An open helmet, lighter equipment, adapted for climate. We can see a bunch of farm animals being attended to by a male Khajiit slave who is completely naked. Do Khajiit even have penises? I don't know. I'm not Queen Baron Zaya. I spent the night camping on a little island in the view of the village since I didn't want to deal with the annoying Indorals. Therene water lilies. Unique regional flora. Hmm, what is this place? Soon you'll be reduced to dust. Looks like smugglers. I suppose a river makes for a convenient smuggling route, especially at night. But do you know what's even better than a river? A recall spell. I have no idea why some of the more resourceful smugglers don't cultivate specialists in teleportation magic. There is no shortage of unethical mages guild cadre. Trust me, I know. The extreme availability of fast travel spells in Morrowind is done for the gameplay reasons. It doesn't actually make any sense in-universe. You are free to go, Kinishi. Looks like this is our next stop. 
my first mud crab, if you can believe it. A Hlalu plantation, and a sizable one. The owner's luxurious palace. The Oren family master at arms is decked in ridiculously expensive ebony armor. It's hard to overstate just how incredibly rich the Dunmer plantation owners actually are. And that's the treasure vault. A bunch of interesting stuff inside. There is a sophisticated lock on the door. Multiple guards are eyeballing us. Oh look, this thing reminds me of one of them traditional Dunmer helmet designs. The Dark Elves are very into crab-based manufacturing. Almas Theer, a large tribunal temple city and a holy site for pilgrims. Rumors flow from the House of Troubles. Follow them and you will surely drown. The new voice acting is good. Slipped on Draywax, that one. Cracked his skull. What a fool. It's obvious that this is not the same actor, but the imitation is of high quality. The only problem with the voice acting is that there aren't that many new lines, but there are a lot of ordinators, so you keep hearing the same three or so barks over and over again. Skyrim, home of the Nords, also had new voices for Reachman characters, but these were actually cleverly edited lines from the original game. Orc voices pitched up. Almas Theer acts as a bridge connecting the Hlalu lands on the western bank with the Indoril lands on the eastern side of the river. What do you take me for, a fool? Go away. Despite the inhospitable locals, the town is a busy trade settlement with many services. A Hlalu skirt. Dunmer fashion, not our style. A port and a silt strider station. Equipment to unload larger ships that pass through here. As you can see, the place is very vertical. It needs to be. It's a bridge. The monastery nearby is a Dunmer holy site associated with Veloth the Pilgrim, the father of the Dunmer people who, together with his followers, traveled to Morrowind all the way from the Somerset Isles. The interiors of these temple structures are certainly very spacious. The Dunmer slaver has a problem. Someone tipped him off that one of the slaves is a Hlalu spy. He doesn't know who that is and he can't sell them to Indoril until he finds out. We interrogate the captives. Each one has a story we can double check against the slaver's records. Jawir the Argonian boasts about his impressive beast pedigree. Lainasa the Dunmer was enslaved after incurring a gambling debt. Rulin the Altmer was originally a priestess of Xarxes, whoever that is, and considers Dark Elves to be subhuman. Sabelvan. Jar Jojid the Catman refused to tell anything about himself or to cooperate with the investigation in any way. This introduces us to the central conflict of Antherin, a low-intensity covert war between the entrepreneurial and somewhat open-minded Hlalu and the legalist and traditionalist in Doril. A Dunmer affair, such conflicts are not fought with armies, but with a dagger in the night. It's time for us to go back to Old Ebonheart. Aurelia Draconis, a local woman, complains about a rat infestation. Let's go see what's up. We learn two things. Well, three things. The Breton woman seems to possess some skill at sorcery. She appears to be mentally unwell. And um, the rat turned out to be a Velk locked in the closet. Aurelia was buying Velk nectar from a man by the name of Ginur Dolvi from a nearby settlement of Vul. At some point, he jacked up the prices and uh, she decided to start her own Velk enterprise? What is Velk nectar exactly? Vul is easily reachable on foot. It's a medium-ish sized arrangement of Bilothi-style buildings administered by House Indoril. There is a spell merchant here, and with a good selection, too. A trader sells traditional Indoril skirts, a baker's hall, cool, and a brewer's hall. What are they brewing here? What's Punavit? A traveling Nord merchant complains about the Dunmer grifters. Other Dark Elves indeed confirm that the local town scams foreigners, which is cool with them, but you know, it would be even better if there were no foreigners around to scam. This is the Nectar Man. Punavit is a beverage made from Velk Nectar. It happens to be sacred to House Indoril. It's illegal for foreigners to possess it and it's illegal for the elves to sell it. The Great House controls the supply. Many outlanders want Punavit, but why? It doesn't seem to be a narcotic substance. 
Gnur gave us a free jug of the nectar as a bribe and promised to sneak into Aurelia's house and steal the Velk somehow. He'll do it too, it's his rear end on the line. I go talk to one of the brewers. He says there is no way in hell he is revealing the industry secrets. But honestly, he doesn't seem to know that much. Says the Indoril elite uses the beverage for some sort of a ritual, but it's not clear what the ritual actually is. Oh, whatever, let's just go back to the guild. And who are you? The wizard wants us to test an experimental enchantment of some sort. We make a bet. If we catch him, we win 50 septums. Sure, why not? What the fu- Well, that is intriguing. Let's go find him. By next morning, after getting lost in the unfamiliar wilderness of Antherin, we reach this place. The chapel settlement of Roa Deer is the regional capital of House Endoril. Its role appears to be mostly administrative, as it offers very few services to non-members. What is it, peasant? The destitute Dunmer woman is not impressed with me. Our first sneak peek into mysterious Endorial rituals. Still not sure what Punavit actually does, but you need to be high on something to find this clothing style to be anything but undignifying. A local guard confiscates the jug of nectar we've been carrying and makes us pay a fee. That's fine, I comply. No reason to antagonize the locals. A wayside shrine. I think it sings to us. We need to go back to Vul and find the racing wizard guy. I'm curious about the experimental enchantment. We do eventually find him near a Dunmer plantation. He is naked and dead. And this appears to be the cause. A pair of boots that administer shock damage to the person wearing them, while also increasing their athletic skill by 500 to 1000 points. Well, let's try them out. That's awesome. Both Tamriel Rebuilt and Project Tamriel are generally well itemized. You won't find many overpowered items and those you do find often have some sort of a downside to them. In this case, I wish the boots dealt more damage to the wearer since it's too easy to just shrug it off. Although this might be because we gained a few experience levels. The athletics enchantment of the boots also makes us able to do longer jumps. Characters without well-developed acrobatics skill will still take a lot of fall damage. I recharge the magic in the boots with all the smaller souls we collected in our travels. Back at the guild we have another problem. Aurelia, the Breton woman, is now seeing ghosts. We have to check up on her again. I wonder what the ghost actually ends up being. Maybe she caught that Dunmer from Vol sneaking around. Aurelia claims she sees a dark elf fellow in the corner who refuses to leave. <sighs> Alright, let's be professional. No Dunmer ghosts here. No ghosts here either. Or here. Perhaps it's time we discuss visiting the apothecary. This seems to be a spirit of Indoril Noble summoned by Aurelia when she consumed the nectar. I suppose that is the secret purpose of the beverage. The ghost is not happy about any of this. Indoril are might makes right kind of people. As we defeat the spirit, we earn its respect. The Draconis woman, says the ghost, shows great potency in her spirit channeling. We are instructed to escort her to the nearby town of Dondril, where the local Indoril lord will arrange for her to be transported to Roa Deer. Supposedly her unique talents can be put to good use there. Aurelia doesn't seem to mind, so sure, let's go. As we walk towards Dondril, she keeps pestering us with questions. It's gonna be a long trip. Dondril is a small farming village. Just a bunch of shacks, really. The local craftsman sells beautiful candlesticks. Every great house has its own distinct bone mold design, and I'm not a fan of this one. 
Well, it's just the pauldrons. The vertical shoulders look extra stupid, even by bone mold standards. Is this based on some esoteric piece of official concept art I haven't seen? The local lord is surprised to see the Breton woman, but says, hey, he is not the one to argue with the spirits. The Indoril should take care of her. Aurelia seems happy, and the guild is satisfied with the outcome. Seen any elves? <laughs> Get it, guys? It's funny, because there are, in fact, a lot of elves in Morrowind. We spend our free time practicing sword combat downstairs. This is the old Ebonheart Mages Guild. And it's a mess. We sign up with the local chapter. Arkribald Veni is the master wizard, the boss. Hmm, I wonder what's up there. Oh look, Arkwibald has a little private office here. Is that a... is that a Daedric staff? Ouch! Alright, I got the message. Nobody in this branch of the guild knows us and we shouldn't expect any special treatment. Honestly, it's probably a good thing considering our previous Mages Guild adventure ended with a dead master wizard. The first tasks are very basic. We're helping apprentices gather ingredients. There is a type of mushroom growing on the mainland that emits this strange reddish fog. It's very interesting visually, especially at night, since it also glows a little bit. Another smuggler cave. A runaway slave who was lucky enough to escape from the nearby Hlalu plantation. With the assistance of a guildmate, we design a spell that can open a lock of any difficulty. Kvenf's lockpick. It's as good as it sounds, the only downside being the extreme magic consumption. I test the spell on one of the doors downstairs. I'm pretty sure the possession of these Dwemer artifacts is punishable under Imperial law, but it's none of my business. The Dwemer helmet looks interesting. It almost fits our style. Almost. The Ebonhard Bellman is a local newspaper. A Legion expeditionary force smashes the rebels in Black Marsh. Well, I for one feel safer knowing our boys have things under control. There is a new mage in town. Ernandre Nemen is peddling magical wares to the townsfolk. Technically not illegal, but it could interfere with guild operations. So it would be better if he joined the guild. Ernandre is a fast-talking used Guar salesman type. He is actually a pretty useful spell merchant. Tamriel Rebuild tends to be conservative with these. He immediately agrees to join our organization and then tries to sell us a meaningless magical ring for 50 septums. Sure, whatever, if it gets you off the street. A local woman came to the guild with a problem. Her brother, one of the city guards, got his mind tampered with by magical means. The guard keeps complaining how hungry and tired he is, referring to the environment as a stable. The investigation eventually leads us back to our friend Hernandre. We search his room in the inn and discover this. It was an experiment, he says. A breakthrough in telepathy. Imagine the application. People all over the world will be able to communicate instantaneously with one another, no matter the distance between them. Our boys down there in Black Marsh will be able to talk to their loved ones daily. Killing the Guar breaks the spell. Another day in the Mages Guild. In between jobs, we keep practicing with various weapons in the training hall. A problem in the inn? What is it this time? Oh. Well, the short version is that one of the guild apprentices got drunk, made the chairs levitate, then proceeded to exit the tavern and fall into a nearby well. The easiest way to get the apprentice out is by teaching him one of the teleport spells. If teleportation is this easy to master, how come it's not the most common way of traveling? Arquibald doesn't have any more jobs for us, for now. We should seek employment opportunities elsewhere. Welcome to the town of Akamora, a large Endorial settlement in the mountainous Mifalan Vales, east of Old Ebonhard. It's a developed town with a good number of services. This here is Akamoran Fighters Guild. Your turn to talk, ours to listen. The guildmates are refreshingly nice to us. Amiro, the Red Guard, gives orders. We need to take out a gang of bandits holed up in a place called Seranacid. Now, the intrigue here is that the guild already sent one of our associates to take care of the problem, which he failed to do, and now he's nowhere to be found. The Mephalan Vales region is Morrowind. Morrowind, a complex maze of canyons and passages covered with fog populated by cliff racers and nyx hounds.
The map is always lying to you. Paths are hidden underneath other paths. You never really master the veils. Instead, you just overcome them. This is the In-Between, a cleverly named retreat for adventurers. Hosgob was the one the guild sent. He says the job is too dangerous and the bandits are well fortified. He doesn't seem to be interested in working for our organization anymore, which is fine. Here is the cave in question, and that's what the orc was talking about. A bandit crossbowman is taking pot shots at us while being protected by a fortification. Didn't save him in the end, though. Otherwise, it looks like a fairly ordinary smuggler's operation. Operation. Some Dwemer artifacts, weapons… I think I'll borrow one. We need to have something to practice with once we're back in Old Ebenhard. Can't you see I wish to be left alone? Find someone else to bother. I don't have a lot of patience for- Akamora is a friendly place. So, where are you from? This is a philosophical question in our case. We've been initially taken to Morrowind from the Imperial City Prison, so Cyrodiil, I suppose. The next job is killing the bandits who were ambushing pilgrims traversing the Vales. Amiro provides very precise instructions on how to get to the shrine. The region being what it is, we should follow these instructions to the letter. This is the place. Observe how cleverly it is hidden on the overworld. You won't be able to spot the entrance unless you know exactly what you're looking for, not even if you were levitating above the stone maze. We loot the bandit's very expensive sword. The shrine, an important pilgrimage destination for tribunal temple converts. Our next task is… Ugh. Two slaves, a Khajiit and an Argonian, escaped from a local egg mine. We need to find them and return them to their masters. Amiro is not very comfortable with any of this and says if we can discreetly help them get away, that might be worth forfeiting the guild pay. Don't talk to any of the guards, he says. Kwama are, well, essentially Morrowind's domesticated insectoid chickens. They live underground, in colonies. Kwama queens produce eggs that are consumed as food. One of Morrowind's main exports, in fact. There were even attempts to establish egg mines in Velenwood and Black Marsh. We find the slaves in a remote shack in the mountains. They need our help and the Argonian has a plan. We are to plant their slave key in the mine belonging to their former master's competitors. Afterwards, we distract the guard and the slaves can escape. They don't have anything to repay us with, but the Argonian tells of the existence of a secret society of abolitionists called the Twin Lamps. Amiro is satisfied, says we did the right thing. He is not the one in charge of the guild, however. The boss is furious. Our pathetic little plan failed completely. By being seen in the mine and by talking to the guard, we incriminated both ourselves and, more importantly, the organization. Now the guild's reputation will be tarnished, perhaps for decades. How are we supposed to operate? You must be joking. Bother someone else. From now on, we are restricted to jobs no one else wants. A trader from Cyrodiil lost his business ledger. We have to retrace his steps. The man was negotiating with the local nobles, with pretty much all of them. Oh, come on, leave me alone. So we go from noble to noble, many of whom make fun of us because of how stupid our Kwama mind plot was. <laughs> what was that? I like it. This is our new style from now on. Look, there is an impressive adamantium helm on display. This elf ordered his Khajiit servant to steal the ledger as a joke. He knew the Imperial would be annoyed. We negotiate to get it back. I had to bribe quite a few people to get to this point, so I think I'll take this as compensation. Now, with all that business concluded, we return to Old Ebonheart. Let's see what's in today's paper. The most fashionable woman in the city is the top administrator of the East Empire Company. You don't say. The Imperial Archaeological Society represents the non-magic side of the state's scholarly effort. Certainly there are many things in Morrowind that would interest archaeologists, like anything Dwemer. This is some sort of an oversized mechanical construct. A schematic of a contraption of some kind? The kitten armor is a traditional and ancient Dunmer design, going all the way to the days of the Velothi. Long before Talos, the Empire attempted to conquer Morrowind twice. The old armor belonged to a second-era Riemann legionnaire. 
Hmm, these bracers have a genuinely useful constant effect enchantment. Not open to the general public, society members only. Inside, there is a bunch of supplies and elaborate instructions on how to clean dirt from historical artifacts. Use Mazte to remove Dwemer Grease. Do not drink the Mazte. Native to the Somerset Isles, goblins could be found as far as Akavir, supposedly. Argonian Hist Kiras, an artifact of the Dunmer Argonian War from a few centuries ago. Bone Mold Armor comes in a variety of styles, most are associated with a specific great house, but there are also generic variants. Creating this kind of armor is a Dunmer know how. On the top floor of the building, there is this huge map of Tamriel. We are here. A workspace of a scholar. Looks like the texts and maps are being copied by hand. I'm sure it's possible to design a spell to do that for you. Let's see what's downstairs. I need to know what's behind this door. I am something of a scholar myself. We use a combination of illusion and alteration spells to open the door while remaining unnoticed by the guard. This is a workshop. Research logs, Dwemer items, maintenance equipment, bits of armor. A Dwemer scarab schematic. But there is a vault inside the vault. Now what is this? Radak Disvir, an enchanted dwarven mask, in poor condition, was probably collecting dust waiting for a specialist to take a look at it. I love this. We can't be seen exiting the building, so I use a teleportation spell instead. Uh, no, I, I can't. For archaeologists, it's an object of scientific study, but for us, it's just a shiny toy. We have to return it. I'll just uh, put it back on the shelf. Time to purchase industrial amounts of soul gems in order to trap souls of creatures we spar with during the training sessions in the Fighters Guild. At this point, we are a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is essentially no room for improvement without using magical gear. The palace guard complains that his son got shipped to a remote place called Solstheim. Any time now. Any time now. Any time now. A traditional Kolovian greeting. The Imperial Census Building is currently undergoing important structural repairs. The Valenwood Mission. Home of the Creepy Elves. I don't like you much. Arkay's Tower. The god of the cycle of birth and death, in some cultures, Arkay is considered to be more important than even Akatosh. The priests here maintain the Ebon Tower's mortuary. Doesn't seem like they're doing a good job. The bodies keep disappearing. A mystery for a specialist from the guild to solve. A father is mourning his son, an imperial legionnaire who perished in Morrowind. But the coffin is empty. We find his body in the sewers beneath the tower. I know where this is going and I'm not gonna like it. The orc is an honest-to-god scientist, an assistant to the court physician. The bodies were used for unethical experimentation. The experiments can potentially save thousands of lives. He offers us a bribe. But we learned this lesson in Carthwaston and then again in Nakamura. What's your story? Just an ordex ex-prisoner from Cyrodiil trying to make a living as a mercenary. I hope my criminal record won't be a problem. The court wizard of the Ebon Tower is a wood elf named Tariel who is nowhere to be found. Tariel, Tariel, a familiar name. It might be to you too, assuming you played Morrowind for more than five minutes. Time to visit Vardenfell again. It's a short trip. Seydanin is just across the channel. If there is anything I can do, I am humbly at your service. That's because you and me, Fargoth, we're friends. That would be Tariel. Looks like the Burgrave needs a new court wizard. On the body, we find several copies of one of the most infamous magical items in Morrowind. Scrolls of Icarian Flight. What do these do? Well, exactly what the name suggests. But it's a bad idea to use one of the scrolls at night. Won't be able to see the terrain. We wait until morning, listening to the music of the Strider. It's impressive how smooth is the transition from Tamriel rebuilt content to the original and then back again. Individuals unfamiliar with the game will never be able to tell the difference between the vanilla and the modded content. Always impressive when this level of authenticity is being reached by any mod for any game, even more so in case of Morrowind, which is one of the most nuanced fictional worlds ever made in any medium. Why walk when you can ride? Why ride when I can do this? Now see, there is a trick to Icarian Flight. 
The trick is to cast a slow fall spell so that the fall doesn't instantly kill you. This game. Now that's more like it. Uh oh. Oh, come on! Should have paid attention in alteration class. We almost reached the Ibn Tower in just one jump. Not bad. The Count learns of Tariel's death. There are two apprentices, he says. One of them will become the new Master Sorcerer. As a guild specialist, we're qualified to provide organizational assistance. The city's taverns reviewed. Apparently the place near the docks is notorious for watering down liquor. Calcamello the Altmer. Arrogant, self-serving, but a very talented mage. Saturius the Imperial, an approachable man but not very skilled. The Count intends to put both apprentices through a series of trials. If left to his own devices, Saturius will certainly lose the contest. Hmm, perhaps this is an opportunity to make soon-to-be court wizard of the Ebon Tower indebted to the guild. Periodically, we return to fighters' training basement to practice. Skeletons are old news. Perhaps we should try sparring with a Dremora. Yes, that's more like it. They're more durable. What exactly do you require of me? I need you to assist me in making another spell. Kvanth's Warform is not the most complex of sorceries. For around three minutes, which should be more than enough for an average cave or tomb, we conjure several pieces of Daedric armor. Now we have access to powerful defensive items without having to physically carry them on our person. You may remember this book. The tome we confiscated from a merchant in Dragonstar on behalf of the Hammerfell Guild. That was months ago. The man was suspected of being a Daedra summoner, and this was the proof. Back in the Reach, we weren't competent enough at conjuration magic to actually learn anything from the tome. But since then, a lot of things have changed. The book teaches us how to summon golden saints, servants of May Daedra Shiogorath. The creatures are known to master enchanters for possessing extremely potent souls. This ability will be invaluable in the future. In the far future, that is. For now, we should stick to exploring Anthurin and collecting smaller souls for practice. This smuggler's hideout has crates full of illegal substances and a bunch of pillows. Clever smugglers, but not clever enough to learn a recall spell. The Khajiit looks like he's seen some stuff. Jajaba is trying to extort money on behalf of the Eastern Thur Abolitionist Society. Now, I too am somewhat of an abolitionist in the Southern Akamoran Society, but I've never heard about these guys. Back in the guild, we take some lessons in sneakery from Domashir, the trainer. Old Ebenhardt feels like home. I would buy property in town if there was something interesting for sale. An Ashlander merchant is selling Dunmer trinkets and talismans. Wait, are you a Bosmer? That's a nice hustle. What's up with the creepy statues? You are beginning to annoy me. Beginning? I've been here every day for the last month and a half. Our doors are always open. At least this lady remembers us. Here is something funny. The two trainees at the Fighters Guild were practicing for such a long time, both of them broke their weapons and now the script makes them fight with bare hands. Perhaps they are imitating our style. Using the magical boots of speed, we are doing high-intensity interval training for general fitness purposes. Actually, it's because I want to level the enchanting skill by recharging the boots. No sign of rumored tournament. The long anticipated event is not expected anytime soon. Arquibald has a problem. One of the apprentices summoned a frost Atronach in the city's harbor district. Together with the local guards, we get rid of it. Now he is concerned that we might have caught a disease, like a cold or something. He makes another apprentice heat up some water for us, and uh, since this is the Mages Guild, this almost leads to our premature death. Not being satisfied, Arquibald sends us to a local alchemist for a potion. The Altmer makes us inhale fire souls as a prank, and then she tells us we are probably not really sick. Arquibald disagrees. He gives us an enchanted healing robe and says we should wear it for at least one full day in order to get cured. This is my least favorite robe design in Morrowind. I think it's everyone's. Aren't you a sight? Please, this is not a good time for your sarcasm. You are a fool to walk around like that. Arquibald is not in his office. He is not upstairs either. What the hell is wrong with that man? 
I spar with skeletons in order to unwind a little. King Helseth ascends the throne. The conservative Dunmer, that is almost all Dunmer, probably consider him to be an imperial plaything. But it's a philosophical question who actually has more power in Morrowind, the Empire or the Tribunal. Despite all the rhetoric and posturing, the Indorial guards uphold the imperial law in their chapel cities. Arquibald is back. He makes fun of us for wearing a stupid looking robe. He doesn't remember a thing. Mage's Guild. After practicing and chanting some more, we finally reach level 20. Level 20 characters are considered to be very competent in their class. A veteran of several military campaigns or a regional guild leader. Duke Vedam Dren, the Grandmaster of House Hlalu, is level 23. Most master trainers are 25. The Hands of Almalexia, possibly the greatest warriors in the world, are level 50. We have a job to do. A search for a missing Mage's Guild associate leads us to a hidden cave in a remote part of Antherin. After beating the crap out of a Bosmer necromancer, we hear an incorporeal voice. A rather typical necromancer's cave office, with a Khajiit skull. We hear the incorporeal voice again. There is a problem. The woman is dead, but she doesn't seem to realize it. She is trapped inside a soul gem. The body is unrecoverable. Hastafas Velifer is a necromancer living in Old Ebonheart. He is willing to help for a nominal fee. The legality of all this is not very clear to me. In Morrowind, necromancy is banned, but the Dark Elves do not consider certain culturally important rituals, such as creation of bonewalkers, to be necromancy. In the Empire, academic necromancy is perfectly fine. Some imperial subcultures are even known to practice artistic necromancy, creating constructs meant to express emotion. We proceed with the ritual. The woman is freed from the soul gem. She is still very much dead, this we cannot change, but at least she is no longer trapped inside that thing. She asks us to write down a message to her family in Cyrodiil, says her goodbyes, and that's the end of her story. What a strange place this is. I need to unwind again. The establishment allegedly selling watered down drinks, allegedly. The place appears to be lower class, but in a charming sort of way. We take a few alchemy lessons in Nakamura so that we are not easily pranked by asshole Altmer again. The nearby Daedric Shrine is being studied by Endoril scholars. They are trying to puzzle out which entity the shrine was dedicated to. Inside a locked supply chest we find this book, preaching of the weakness and the imminent collapse of the Empire. I mean, it's true to an extent, uh, certainly these are not the best days for the Septim State, but do you guys want to hear a joke? House in Doril. Inside the shrine, the scholars have set up a little exhibition. Individual pieces are nicely labeled and cataloged. Ebony is one of the most precious substances in Tamriel. Supposedly, it's blood of the gods in solid form. Weapons and armor made from ebony are highly praised. The substance is one of the main reasons the Empire was interested in colonizing Vardenfell. Most of the continent's ebony is found on the island. This man, Furious Matimus, is the Duke of Deshaun, a large place in southwestern Morrowind, most of which is controlled by empire-hating slavers of Great House Dress. There are many other notable individuals residing in the Ebon Tower, like Eris Mandrethi here, one of King Helseth's royal guard. Aquilinius belongs to the Order of the Blades, the Imperial Secret Service. The hidden chamber behind the wall in the High Rock mission has a ledger with coded instructions given by the ambassadors to their spies. There is also this newsletter from Mournhold describing various cases of people dying under suspicious circumstances after their interests conflicted with Helseth's. So little matters, so little time. The cat is a power lifter. It's like a little piece of elsewhere. Well, how I imagine elsewhere to be anyway. The Khajiit ambassador's private chambers are a drug den. Looks like the cats are enjoying themselves here in the tower. Underneath one of the beds there is a poem about moon sugar. In contrast, the Hammerfell mission feels very Spartan. It's like they've only just recently moved in. 
Lord General Kakalia Victrix commands the Emperor's legions in Morrowind. The armor she is wearing is a rare Imperial ebony design. The Imperial bureaucracy at work. The ambassador of House Telvani is a Storm Atronach who speaks an incomprehensible Daedric language no one in the tower understands. The house dress take on bone mold armor design. Mm, certainly distinct. Tamriel rebuilt master class on telling a character story via an arrangement of random household items, musical instruments, potion brewing equipment, a candle, a pair of dice, a bunch of rare plants, four trophy skulls of various races, old brandy. Emperor, King, and Justin. Our character has a notable weakness. We are poor communicators. Our speechcraft skill is pathetic. Experience shows that we operate best in spaces dominated by the cosmopolitan imperial culture. We should work on our speechcraft. The nearest qualified trainer is an Ebonheart. The original vanilla Ebonheart, that is. So we need to address the elephant in the room. How come there are two Ebonhearts in Morrowind? The answer is, there aren't. Both the original and the Tamriel rebuilt version are legally the same entity. The Vardenfell Ebonheart is a continuation of old Ebonheart across the channel. Geographically, they are right next to each other. There is a story behind all this. A thousand years ago, there used to be a Dunmer city called Kalan. As you are well aware, when Talos invaded Morrowind, the living gods of the tribunal quickly agreed to the armistice. Ashamed by such dishonor, many Indoril lords engaged in mass suicide. In Kalaan, the Indoril pathology was taken to the extreme. The city itself seemingly committed suicide and was destroyed by a firestorm. The Imperials recognized this strategic location and built a new town on top of the rubble, naming it Ebonhar which is the imperialized version of the old name. While the Imperials could colonize the Morrowind mainland, the island of Vardenfell was forbidden to them. That was the agreement. A Legion officer found a loophole in the armistice. Yes, building new settlements was forbidden, but expanding the existing ones was not. And that's how Ebonheart was extended across the channel. But then, a few years later, the tribunal deities got more open-minded. The colonization of Vardenfell was permitted. There was was no longer any need for legalist strategery. This lady is a great beginner level speechcraft trainer. We take many lessons from her. And I don't neglect our normal training sessions either. These two are still going at it. All right, we delayed this long enough. The Count is waiting for our assistance in organizing the selection of the new master sorcerer of the Ebon Tower. The first test is enchanting. Calcamello the elf is obviously very talented and the item he creates is potent. On the other hand, the robe made by our boy Saturius will slowly kill the wearer. Actually, not even that slowly. Not a good look. The duke is not impressed. We have to make a decision now. Without our assistance, the Imperial will surely lose. The second test is summoning. Saturius can barely summon a scamp. The Oldmer can do a Daedroth. We goad him into trying to summon a Winged Twilight instead, a creature he can't fully control. This is done via a speechcraft check. Tamriel Rebuilt does more interesting things with Morrowind's dialogue system than the original game. Skill checks and conventional dialogue trees seem to be more common. The guards had to intervene and the second round goes to Saturius. The final challenge is a mage duel. We have a trick up our sleeve. We provide the Imperial with one of the scrolls of Icarian Flight. He thinks he can create some sort of a low-powered offensive version of the spell. The duel takes place outside. Looks like El Camello needs a change of clothes. The Burgrave is impressed. I suppose Saturius is more resourceful than we first assumed, weaponizing the scroll like that. Well, he's the new Master Sorcerer. Time to do some housekeeping. This is the old Ebonhard branch of Bririka Private Bank. Before we open an account, I carefully inspect the security measures they're taking. A knight from High Rock guards the vault. Not a local. I can't help but feel reassured. I liquidate most of the loot we collected and put the money in the bank. There is one last loose end. Remember the Daedric Shrine overlooking Elmasthir? The Daedric Prince known as Malakath was worshipped here, says Silhanil the Witch. She seeks vengeance on the Dremora Uridimu, who made a deal with Silhanil and then betrayed her. Welcome to Oblivion. 
Not sure what plane this is. Doesn't seem to be Ashpit, Malakath's plane. The Daedric structures in this realm resemble the ones found in our world. There are more types of Dreamora found here, including very dangerous sorcerers, or these archers armed with ebony bows. Is this a landmine? Meet Lord Methat's Uldon. This is without exaggeration the hardest battle I've ever fought in Morrowind. I had to use my best summons, the Warform, half of my potions and several scrolls. One to dominate the Storm Atronach he summons. If our character wasn't a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat, this would have been impossible as he effortlessly kills us in two hits. But the reward? Sword of the Moon Reaver. At the time, I didn't know what this was. And the chest has a pair of Daedric pauldrons. Ha! Huh. These pauldrons specifically are some of the most sought-after items in the entire game. Even with metagaming, they are very hard to obtain. We begin assembling our suit of fantasy power armor, but it will take months to acquire a full set. The Moon Reaver carves Dremora like they are made out of butter. This environment looks like the old-style Dunmer sewer infrastructure. Why are there Dunmer sewers in... Actually, I guess this implies they do have toilets, huh? The beast Zral the Maneater is a local fast travel service. He consumes and defecates us back in Mithat Uldon's chamber. At least it's free. No doubt Malakath worshippers would consider this creature to be holy. Maybe it is Ashpit. An old wine cellar stuck in oblivion. More traces of civilization. Whoa, who are you? The spirit is scared of us and cries for help. Welcome to old, old Ebonheart. The Dunmer spirits still inhabit the decaying houses. They have dialogue with unique lines. This elf has been dead for a thousand years, and he is still rather talk to Daedra than Outlanders. It's not entirely clear what happened, but knowing in Doril it probably had to do with rituals, oaths, and pacts. The ghosts seem to be stuck doing whatever they were doing when the city was transported to oblivion, although they are self-aware somewhat. I was relieved to discover this kitchen and its stores of thousand-year-old drinks. We could be stuck here for a long time. I could run out of food and water. There is very little flora, and as it turns out, Daedra hearts don't have calories. This Daedroth wants us to do a plant collecting quest for him. Is this Mage's Guild? No thanks, my crocodile friend. Get a scamp to do it for you. Finally, we discover the hideout of Uridimu the Dremora. We are here to enact vengeance on behalf of Selenil the Witch. Don't be fooled, mortal, says the Dremora. The Witch is more of a puppet than a person. Let me stop you right there, buddy. The universe we inhabit is a place of impossible scope and complexity. Communities, nations, cultures, business interests, relationships, gods, oaths, secret histories, tens of thousands of planes of oblivion, numerous powerful mortals and Daedra. It's about carving your own niche in a world impossible to understand and having a community of like-minded people watching your back. This amulet the witch gave us is our way out. We put it on and are transported back to Mundus. Killing Dremora in Oblivion turned out to be not that different from killing rats in a basement. I think I will seek employment in the Eastern Empire Company after this. I heard good things about the dress code. So yeah, that was Tamriel Rebuilt, Old Ebonheart and Antherin releases. I very much intentionally did not cover the philosophy and history of the project. Will it ever be finished? That is something we'll talk about separately. Tamriel Rebuilt is free, link in the description. Make sure you read the installation instructions. I apologize for the length of the video, but that is after I removed the footage of honestly some of the best and longest quests and adventures in this part of Morrowind. We'll check some of these out later in A People's History of Tamriel Rebuilt. You know, I can't seem to shake the feeling that I'm forgetting something.